biggest mistakes that people make when visiting Colorado is forgetting to pack enough clothing. Don't just pack for the temperature highs, because here, weather varies drastically, both seasonally and throughout the day. It's not uncommon to start the day in a sweater and by afternoon, find yourself comfortable in a t-shirt. Whether you're in Denver or the mountains, the key is to dress in lots of layers. Hi there, I'm Abigail, a Denver local. That's just the first of eight common mistakes that people make when visiting Colorado, but you won't make them if you watch until the end of this video. Stick with me for five minutes and I'll give you invaluable insights on how to be a happy and responsible tourist. Also, to make sure that you don't forget any essentials, I've put together a Colorado packing list guide. Get it by scanning the QR code with your phone or simply click the link in the description. Now let's dive in. Speaking of clothing, another mistake that people make when visiting Colorado is dressing up. Of course, everybody is welcome to express the unique style. We Coloradans are laid back and we're not ones to judge. But if you head to brunch or a brewery in stilettos or a dress shirt, you'll probably be the most dressed up in the room. Colorado is known for its mountain casual style, where flannels, denim, and beanies are wardrobe staples. If you want to blend in with the locals, head to REI for a few new accessories. Another common mistake, forgetting that the altitude here is real. When you visit Colorado, more than likely you'll be flying into Denver International Airport. Famed as the Mile High City, Denver rests at 5280 feet elevation. But some mountain towns, like Leadville for example, are at more than 10,000 feet elevation. If you live closer to sea level, you may experience effects of altitude sickness. The best way to avoid these symptoms is to stay hydrated, avoid alcohol, and limit yourself to moderate exercise for the first 48 hours at altitude. Colorado is famed for its ski resorts and outdoor recreation, but it would be a mistake to miss Colorado's other highlights. Plus, many of these are great things to do as you get adjusted to the altitude. If you're visiting for a ski trip, first consider soaking in one of Colorado's natural hot springs. Maybe before hiking, you take a scenic gondola ride, like one you'd find in Telluride and Cannon City. Drive up the Mount Evans Scenic Byway and take the Cog Railway up Pikes Peak. From history to culture, sports, family attractions, and more, Colorado has it all. For more information, watch our Places to Visit in Colorado video next. If you're enjoying this video so far, please tap the thumbs up button. Our team works really hard to create these guides, and that one click means a lot to us. Plus, YouTube will then know to share similar travel videos with you, making your trip planning even easier. Being unfamiliar with outdoor etiquette is another common mistake people make when visiting Colorado. As one who grew up in a Midwestern suburb, I completely understand that wide open spaces may be foreign, but respect the outdoors by following standard etiquette and the rules posted at the parks you visit. Dispose of waste properly, leave what you find, and be mindful of wildfire risk. Also, please keep your distance from the wildlife and never feed the animals. Your support is appreciated by locals like me. Another common mistake people make is scheduling their trips at less than ideal times of year. Every Colorado season has its perks, but some activities are most enjoyed during certain months. For example, I think it's best to visit Rocky Mountain National Park in September and October. You'll see fewer crowds, bugling herds of elk, and autumn's yellow aspens. The trick is to simply research your destination before booking your flight. Speaking of research, let me tell you a little bit about Travel Lemming. Our free, comprehensive guides are written by knowledgeable locals with first-hand experience. We extensively cover Colorado and have dozens of guides to help you plan your trip. Scan the QR code on screen to bookmark them now, or simply add the word Lemming when searching any destination on Google. Many who visit Colorado make the mistake of disregarding traction laws. If you don't live in a mountain estate, this disregard may be unintentional. But still, unless you have access to an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicle, don't plan on driving into the mountains during the winter months. On some highways, driving without this level of traction is illegal, and at other times, simply unsafe. Rather, take public transportation, like buses and trains, that will take you from Denver into many nearby mountain towns. Or, to secure an appropriate vehicle, consider booking a rental with our preferred service, Discover Cars. I'll drop a link in the description in case you're interested to learn more. The last mistake that people make when visiting Colorado is being unfamiliar with marijuana laws. As one of the first states to legalize recreational use, cannabis tourism is popular, but following the rules is incredibly important. You cannot spark up a joint on a trail, on a ski lift, or while wandering downtown Denver. What you can do is shop a dispensary's wide selection of flour, edibles, and concentrates and have peace of mind knowing that everything is lab tested. You can book a 420-friendly hotel, visit a legal consumption lounge, and book fun tours with grow facilities and on party buses. But most importantly, remember to consume responsibly. Properly packed and more knowledgeable, you're now better prepared for your Colorado travels. But I'll bet you're not familiar with all the activities this epic state offers. To learn about Colorado's most scenic train tour, the best whitewater rafting spot, and my favorite mountain town, be sure to watch our Places to Visit in Colorado video next. Thanks for watching.